I'm back in Glasgow at the moment, and while I was in shopping in the city centre, I came across these sort of nightlights in one of the Asian outlets on Argyll Street. And it's basically it's a kids' nightlight. It doesn't seem to have a light centre in it, but it's LED based, and it shows. It's got various. They had different sort of colours of housings and different pictures, which look as though they're kind of ripped off out of uh, children's storybooks. This one shows a, a bull being attached to a tractor to pull it out of the mud, which is a. Uh, I'm not sure if you'd burst your bull if you did that. Anyway, let's uh, plug this in. I want to plug it in to this slightly industrial lead here. It lights up, and when it lights up, I, I'm shielding it, I'm trying to shield it. I'm so used to shielding the light from the back in the, my usual bench that I'm forgetting that the light is actually from uh, two fluorescent tubes above this with electronic ballasts, but not much smoothing as you may see some ripple. Um, but anyway, it does, the LED lights this fairly evenly. Obviously there's a hot spot in the middle, but it still lights the whole panel, and it is quite a nice light, actually. Um, the... Uh, let's just open it, in fact. Right, I don't think it's got a discharge resistor. That's an interesting feature. Let's short that out. As you mentioned, when I short these out, the screwdriver... Yeah, there's a tiny wee crack there. I, when you short out the screwdriver, uh, because I'm not actually touching anything else in the circuit, it's just the, the short is between the metal and this, that's why I don't get a shock there. But interesting, that was quite tingly. That also, also suggests possibly quite a mod modest size of capacitor in this. So there are three screws in the back. Lots of labels and quality assurance and identification. Oh, here we go. Uh, this splits into two sections. I suppose you could put a new picture in if you wanted. Oh, it's kind of heat staked. I mean, that wouldn't stop you, but it would just mean you'd have to glue it back in. But yeah, that opens up possibilities. The circuit board has the components facing down, but the LED is poking through a hole in it. It's just a single straw hat LED. There's the telltale capacitor, a 330 nanofarad 400 volt capacitor with a blob. Is that just where it's been touched to the soldering iron, or is that flux? Probably both. Oh, it does have a discharge resistor. Oh, it's just got one lead knot soldered. Okay, that explains why I got a tingle. So, there's a smoothing capacitor. A 220 ohm, that's red, red, brown. 221, uh, so that's 22 ohm, 10, 220 ohm. Roughly, I'd say, would you say that's about half watt carbon film, probably being used, well, partly to limit the inrush current, keep it less than about an amp-ish, or in the vicinity of an amp, uh, just for that spike when it's plugged in, just to protect the LED and other circuitry. Um, but also, it'll be doubling up, you know, it'd probably fail like a fuse. Although the carbon film ones tend to fail spectacularly like a fuse. Let's bring in the notepad and uh, make sure this is all on screen. Yes, it is. I'm trying the technique, by the way, from audio perspective. You may notice it's a bit louder. Um, I've got the baseball cap, and I've tried various positions. I've tried clipping the microphone to my beard. It doesn't work very well. It doesn't feel very nice either. Uh, the beard is quite large, so it tends to rustle a bit as well. Uh, but the, at the moment, it's attached to the uh, brim of the baseball cap at the front, just right-hand side, just pointing basically at my right-hand ear. I also tried it on the glasses, which kind of didn't work that well, the spectacle frame. Yeah, and I tried it in various other positions. Like I try, also tried it as a boundary microphone. Look that up online. Uh, pointing down, although it sounded okay, it was very quiet. So uh, I think the, the baseball cap w w sounded the best. However, moving on, uh, this has uh, two soldered connections on here. Quite a big, huge blob of solder. Shiny solder connections suggesting these may not be the latest model. These might be sort of lead era. There's also a couple of pads here, which equate to square holes here, which also suggests that it's probably designed... This circuit board probably fits into other um, plugs. That would be the sort of... Probably a Chinese and American type plug, I'm guessing, for the spacing of those pins. So let's doodle this down. In, the, in this instance, it is polarised. It's got a live and neutral pin, so let's draw it as that. So we've got live, and we've got neutral. The live which is this one, is going to that uh, 
contact it's not used there and also to the 220 ohm resistor so let's draw on that 220 ohm resistor 220 ohm um yeah i think that's about half watt isn't it yeah uh, so then it's going to two diodes, which is just alludes to the fact that, you know, it's, got, it's a standard capacitive dropper circuit. It's seen in so many of these cheap lighting products just because it's the cheapest, easiest way to get a, a you know, bright LED run directly from the mains uh, without dissipating the excess heater using something like a resistor. It's just an efficient way of doing it. Absolutely shockingly bad power factor, but then this is just a tiny amount of current. It's nothing really. It's negligible, the power it's taking. Uh, the other lead goes so that... Oh, actually, you know what? The live pin is soldered into the terminal marked N for neutral, and the neutral pin is soldered into the terminal marked L for live. So, uh, yeah, they're supposed to be the other way around, but uh, that's, this is how it's wired. So the other connection is going rather predictably. It's going to the capacitor, which will then be going to these two diodes. So it is going into the bridge rectifier. And that does have a resistor across it, which is just not quite connected. It's supposed to be connected, but isn't in this instance because they just didn't bother soldering that joint. Either that or something went wrong if it was like an automated soldering system. Uh, so the capacitor is 330 nanofarad, 334, so that's 33 three and 4 zeros, so that's actually 330,000 picofarad, because they tend to rate these things in picofarads, but that equates to 330 nanofarad, which is also 0.33 microfarad. Uh, if, you're, you're, if you just get lost with these figures, don't worry, it just all comes naturally. 400 volts, uh, this resistor, the colour rendering from these fluorescent tubes is terrible, brown, black, green, is one zero and five zeros, is one million ohms, which is one megaohm. Right here, that's pretty straightforward, so where does this capacitor come into play? So there's the two diodes going across there from one lead the, through the resistor and then two diodes uh, feeding one, the positive and the negative. And likewise, the ones that are from the capacitive limited supply are also feeding those. Con so it is straight onto the LED. I drew my lazy wee sort of, yeah, it looks like a pair of boobs, doesn't it? It's very odd. Uh, and the capacitor... That's just laziness. You know, if I, if I really took the time, I'd draw separate little arrows, but that's just lazy LEDs. So here's an electrolytic capacitor just connected across that. Let's check the polarity is right. Yes, it is. And it's rated, oh, tiny text, 10 volts, 220 microfarad. So if the LED went open circuit, the voltage across this 10-volt LED would shoot up to about 330 volts, or it would try, and it would do that thing where this capacitor would limit the current and it would get very hot and then it would vent. But as we've seen in previous little experiments, it does so in a controlled manner. So it's hackable. You could put a new LED in, a warm white LED perhaps. Uh, and the circuit is just basically standard. You know, it's stereotypical. So that's a... That's okay. I quite like it actually. I'm I'm going to uh, I'm going to solder that uh, resistor in because I don't want another nip off it because that was quite a little zing there. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's quite a nice little light. I have to say it wasn't super expensive, uh, but um, it's fine. It's uh, it's quite smart. The warm white LED will probably improve it because it kind of matches the rest of the colouring. But yeah, it's quite neat. I like it.